Hey, what's up? It's me again. This is something this ever. And um, ABS Inc., as you can see in the back. Um, this is my first meeting coming out of the holiday season. And um, I just wanted to make a quick video, let anybody um, who's here, if there's anything on this video that I'm going to have to blank out for the purposes of you know, proprietary information, you will know that because you'll see a picture that says, you can't see this. <laughs> okay, so um, the guys I got on the call today are uh, Gene Spencer, who's brand new, Matt Steele, who's relatively brand new, and Todd Lawton, my guy I've known in 35 years. And um, he's a musician, accomplished bass player, played with Maserati, played with uh, uh, Brown Mark and the Bad Boys, Paisley, played with Toby Mac for many years, played with one of the first bands I was ever in called The Business in Austin, Texas. He's a crazy bass player. But uh, he, just like I, realized a long time ago that if, you, if you're trying to get music to be your sole source of income, that's like, that's like telling your wife you want her to be a hooker, basically, right? Because you, what you're trying to get your love to do is to make you money. And sometimes it doesn't. Work. So um, with that said, uh, I'm having a little quick meeting with the new guys, kind of an orientation. And um, uh, Gene, you were asking a question a minute ago. I wanted to make sure I got this on video. Tell, tell me the question that you had. Oh, yeah. What other business have I been in? Yeah, so again, the businesses that you're going to be contacting, I provide you with oh, those. I remember now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the, at your, your mentors uh, uh, on his channel. He was mentioning that uh, uh, how it might be difficult sometimes to find where Pope Palace is located. And that, right, and that's, and that's for the business model of going and finding pallets from suppliers that potential suppliers turning around and selling them to another client so another client so what that what that entails is driving a truck one finding a truck no first finding a truck either buying it or renting it driving a truck getting up in the morning early going and picking up pallets delivering them to somebody who needs pallets that's five things we don't do Okay, I see. You don't have to worry about any of that. That's old, not old. That's just not my model. Okay, that's, John Wilk that's John Wilker's model. But what John Wilker told me out of his own mouth, when you get to the brokering section, you can throw everything else away. But, everybody, but everybody's not suited for everything. So when I do business, I like to do business from the comfort of my home. Right, I like wearing a sweatshirt and and you know lounge pants, and the only reason why I'm this dressed up is because I'm on YouTube right now. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so but but in essence, the the process is very simple. We find companies that need pallets. I've already got that list. All right, I provide you with companies in certain industries that need pallets. I've already got the suppliers, in other words, the pallet yards, I've got those companies lined up. I already know what they're gonna sell those pallets to me for. But some of them I can't know specifically because some of the clients need specific types of pallets, all right? Once I find out what those people are paying for those pallets, then I turn around and go to the supplier and say, this is what I need you to sell them for, right? Okay. And then they make a decision, right? Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you got customer A, potential customer A. They need a thousand pallets a week, right? Thousand pallets a week. Those thousand, no, let me give a, a specific example. I've got a client, right, that needs 2,000 pallets a week. They were paying, on average, $10 a pallet, okay? So they're paying $20,000 a week for pallets, wood with nails in it, all right? The company they were buying these from was one of the biggest pallet distributors in the Twin Cities, right? 
what I did was go to their competitors, smaller businesses that sell pallets that want that deal, right? And I made a deal, simple. These people are paying 10, right? I want to sell it to them for nine. I want to save them money, right? So I'm not selling them anything. I'm just saving them money. It's a much different conversation instead of, gotcha. hey, I've got something you need, you know? We know you need it. You're buying them already. I'm going to save you money, right? So they're paying 10. I'm selling it to them for nine, but I bought them for five. In other words, I went to the supplier and said, I've got a client that needs 2,000 pallets a week, right? I want you to sell them to me for five. I'm going to sell them to them for nine you're going to deliver them without a delivery charge. And that's how it works. It won't okay. be your client, it'll be my client. I'll be buying the pallets from you. You will be delivering them to them. You'll make your money. They'll make their pallets, they'll get their pallets and I'll make my money, everybody's happy. First conversation was, I can't, I can't sell them to you for five. I said, let me ask you, can you or won't you sell them to me for five? In other words, I know what you want to make. I need to know what you need to make. Because we're talking 2,000 pallets here. So whatever number I need, I would think that as a business, you would want that to be your, your client. You would want to be able to say each and every week, I'm going to make $10,000 from this customer. Right now, if you don't want to do that, that's fine, because there's ten other companies just like you, right? And you know you want that client, so I need them for five. Well, yeah, they got them for five. So at five dollars a pallet times two thousand, they get ten thousand dollars. At nine dollars a pallet times five not times um. 2,000 pallets is $18,000. That leaves $8,000 in the middle. Guess who gets that $8,000 every week? Yeah, me. Right, now, that's because that's the deal I did. Now, here's what actually happened. They said, because we don't know who you are and we don't, we never heard of this before, we're just going to we're just gonna do a little bit. I said, how about we do this? You give me half of your business. You keep paying $10 for them, but half of it, you work with me and you pay nine. And we do that for six months. And if after six months, it's all good, let me take the rest. If after six months, it's not all good, then you walk away. But I'm not gonna let them walk away, that's dumb, all right? So all I have to do is make sure I do good customer service. That, and all that requires is they get their pallets every Monday, starting January, the first Monday in January. They get their pallets every Monday at 8 a.m. My job is to make sure by, eight, by noon, I call them and say, did your pallets show up on time? Yes. Were they exactly what you needed? Yes. Is it exactly what you've been getting for 10? Yes. But you paid nine, right? Yes. Thank you. I'll talk to you next week. Because they don't have to pay up front. The pallet company does not collect the money. They send, mm. I send them an invoice every Monday. They have seven days to pay me. All right? They have up to seven days to pay me. The pallet yard that delivered the pallets, they have a 14 day. So by the time I get good money within seven days, I immediately turn around, pay myself and take the rest and pay them immediately. So they have 14 days, but let's say the company, which most of them do, pay within two days. So on Monday, by Wednesday, I've already gotten, right, the $18,000. Or no, I've already gotten the $9,000 because they only did half, right? 
soon as I get that 9,000, I'm sending the pellet yard there five. And then the 4,000 is left in the company. A week. Uh. A week. Nothing out of pocket, really, because you got your money up front. Didn't cost me a dime. Because I got That's the money first. And the pellet yard is happy, even though they got a 14 day, they've never had to wait 14 days for their money. Right? It's just a safety precaution so that if the company that's paying me, money gets missed in like a holiday or something, where it takes up to seven days for me to get the money. But even then, it's gonna, they're gonna get theirs the moment I get mine. Now, let's take that same deal and make it Matt's deal, right? So that same exact numbers, not the same company, obviously, but the same exact numbers are Matt's deal now, all right? So Matt does the deal. I give Matt the company. Matt makes the call, takes him two or three phone calls, all right? After Matt makes the calls, he closes the deal. The people send him an invoice of how much they're paying for their pallets. Matt then forwards that same email to me. I contact the, the, the pallet yards, all right? And I get the best deal, all right? Let's say the deal is $10. Matt makes the deal for nine. Pallet yard sells them to the company for five, all right? They do the full deal of 2,000 pallets instead of half. Right, because Matt's really good at closing. So they do the whole deal. Right. It's an eight thousand dollar split. Matt takes four grand home every week. Because once I, the company gets the money, I pay Matt first, then I pay the pallet yard. Because I got 14 days. I got the money after day two. Matt gets his money. Then it's not having to wait two weeks because I want to keep the money in my bank account and draw interest on Matt's money. No, that's crook. That's crooked shit. Right? Matt gets his money when I get the money. So Matt closed the deal on, say, a Wednesday. That following Monday, Matt's client gets their pallets at eight o'clock in the morning. 2,000 pallets at nine bucks a piece. Right? Once they get their pallets, Matt calls and says, hey, did you get everything okay? Yep, everything's great. All right, great, cool. Don't forget your invoice, you have a seven day invoice, but pay as soon as possible. No problem. They send their money on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I get the money. I message Matt, Matt, I just got paid. You'll get paid today, all right? Unless you get to where I'm sending you a check, then you'll get your check when I send it to you, all right? I'm gonna, send, I'm gonna write the check up, send it to you today. I'm also gonna write a check up and send it to the, to the you know, pallet yard. They got their money within four days. Matt got his money within four days. And he'll get that money every time. It won't be a set time. It'll be whenever I get it, you get it, right? So it won't be any question. It won't be in a situation where I get paid, the company gets paid, I should say, and Matt's sitting around waiting two weeks for his first check because you got to hold back two weeks for the blah, blah, ah, that's bullshit. That's just a way to keep stacking up chips on your money. That's all that is. I don't play those games. It's very simple. Now, Matt just made four grand a week on one client. Again, let me do the numbers. I'm not really good at mathematics. I'm a musician, remember? So um, let me just pull up calculators here, right? And I'll move it up here in front so you can see it. All right, calculator, $4,000 times 52 weeks, I only do 50, oh, no, 50 weeks, times 50 weeks. Because, you know, sometimes companies take a week off for Christmas. Sometimes they take a couple of weeks off and, and their, their business is closed, whatever reason, you take two weeks out of the year and, and that's not, you're not gonna get paid on those weeks. You might anyway, but just for numbers, times 50 weeks, that's $200,000 a year on one client. 200K a year, on one client, folks. So Matt's excited. You mean to tell me after two or three phone calls and an email, I just made 200 grand a year? Yep. So as long as you keep that client, which is just a matter of staying on top of them, once a week, you call them, make sure they got their product, make sure they had no problems. 
once a month, send them an email which has a survey in it. They fill that survey out and know that you've got a birth date set on your calendar that when this six months of the, of the contract is up or 90 days, whatever you agree to, when that contract is up, you contact them and re-up. I can't see why they would want to not work with you, but you know, whatever. During the course of that 90 days or six months or however long that contract is, the company they were working with before, they reached out. Wow, we just lost X number of dollars, right? We just lost 20 grand a month, a week, right? What happened? Well, they went with somebody else. Okay, we'll call them. They call your company. Your contract states that if another company comes to you, comes to them and wants to negotiate a lower deal, you have the first right of refusal. ABS Inc. has first right of refusal to meet or beat. So your company calls you or messages you and says, this company wants to be able to sell us these same pallets for 850 instead of nine, All right? Can you make that deal? Matt calls me and says, the guy, uh, they wanted the company they were with wants to do 850, All right? You call the company. Now I call the company that they're with, they were selling them to me for five. I say I need to I need to go down to 450. Man, we can't do that, Greg. I mean, we we're stretching it at five. Well, here's the deal. Somebody's trying to get my business. They lowered the price by 50 cents. If you can't lower your price for 50 cents, I'm gonna have to go find somebody who can. Now, who was that somebody who can? The company is trying to get the deal. <laughs> okay. The company is trying to get the deal from me. So what do I do? I call them first. Say, I understand you guys are trying to take my money. So I understand, I get it, that's part of the deal. Right? I, I know that's how it works. And we can either play a race to the bottom or I can work a deal with you. Now, you're trying to get these pallets for 850 by approaching my client, which is what, which is your right. You're well within your right to try to save them more money. I can commend you on that. However, if you want this client, and I'm about to give it to you. Right now, I'm about to hand it to you on a platter. You're going to get that same business back, hand it back to you on a platter. But this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to sell those pounds to me for 450 or you will no longer have that client. Because they have a contract with me. Now, I can have them honor the contract by giving them those same pallets for 850 and you make 450 a pallet. We have a deal. They're either going to say yes or no. If they say no, they know that they can't get that deal unless I can't come up with a pallet yard that can do 450. Or I might stay with the company I have, make them a deal for 850 and just lose 50 cents per pallet. So Matt, at that point, I'll say, Matt, here's the deal. I know you're making four grand a week, right? Right, I get that, right? Four grand a week. But what I'm, what I'm gonna have to change that to, if you're okay with it, I'm gonna have to change it to 3,500. That's 50 cents less per pallet. 3,500 times 50 equals 175 grand. You're gonna lose $25,000 a year on that one deal. If you're okay with that, I'm gonna close that deal right now. Are you okay with that? Matt, can you hear me? Yeah, I'll be okay, okay with that. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because it's one deal. It's one deal. Don't forget, that's one deal. Because you're not trading time for dollars, right? You don't have to go get a new client every week. No, that one client, that was paying you 200 a week, 200 a year, is now gonna be paying you 175, but you kept it. You kept 175,000 as, as opposed to going to zero on that client, which means then you gotta go get another client. So G, excuse me. Yeah. So anytime that, you know, because I mean, this is very familiar, this is all sales, you know, you, you take a client uh, from, from a provider, you know, they're gonna come back for the business, um, sometimes they don't come back right away because it's like, you know, I tell them, look, you should have been given the, you should have been given them this in the first place and it wouldn't have happened. 
You know right. what I'm saying? Exactly. But but just say okay, they come back, or or just in any case, we always come to you and say, hey, gee, you know, I've got an issue where these guys are trying to take my business, and then basically you broker the deal from there. We we just kind of bring it to you. Yeah. You broker it. Okay. That's we don't it. have to do. You don't have to do no negotiating with the pallet okay. yard. I do all the. See, here's where the fifty fifty comes in. My job is to give you the companies and broker the deal with the pallet yard. Your job is to do one, two things, close the deal and customer support the deal. That's it. Okay, now by closing the deal, say we got ABC Lumber and say we got ABC Lumber in Kansas City, mm -hmm. you know, and um, uh, you provided the leads for that, then basically, You've you've already hit them with the numbers that you're willing to sell it to them for. So what is my responsibility at that point? I haven't hit them with the numbers. ABC Lumber, you mean is that the pallet yard? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, let, again. No, no, no. I'm sorry, G. I'm sorry. I'm on the back end. I'm talking about the customer that we're going to service. Okay. We've already got, yeah. We've already got the deal on the cost on the pallets, but now we you know it's like where what what is my responsibility? To make sure everything goes smooth at that point, you know, Here's once we hit the numbers. Okay. Uh, okay, let me. Like, good question. It's a great question. Now, let me let me explain this again. If you take, if you take just, let's say, ABC Lumber is the pallet yard. Let's say, um, what happened? You guys see me? I I just changed into some, some kind of weird deal. You see that? <laughs> but anyway, oh yeah, ghost. Yeah, I ghosted out all of a sudden. Now. ABC Pallet Company is the company that is going to be servicing our client, right? Our client is ABC Distributors. I don't know. I can tell what they sell based on how they got picked up in the first place. But it doesn't matter to me how they do it or why they do it or any of that, right? Your job is to call them in the first place. Tell them why it makes sense to be in our business. Get the email from them that says um, what they're paying, how many, what type, what size, everything. Right, so we know what we tell to the pallet yard, ABC uh, pallets, right? And then call, let me know what that is because you CC me that email, right? You copy me that email that they sent to you showing right. what. Right, right. What so, they're paying. Right. Mm -hmm. And what it is, how much, how many, what size, what kind of wood, the whole thing. If they don't have that, then you're going to have to go to the company and say, listen, I'll bring my phone, which has a camera on it. I'll bring my uh, tape measure and I'll bring my pad and pen and I'll do all the measurements right there on the spot. And we can do it right there and we get it done. That's the only time you would ever okay. have to leave your house. Okay? Gotcha. Now, at that point, once you give me those numbers, then I go to work for you. I go to the pallet yards all over the city and make and negotiate a deal with, for the most money per pallet that we can squeeze, all right? Some of them are gonna, they're paying so little that it might only be 50 cents. It might only be a dollar between what they're paying and what we can get them for, all right? So let me pull this over here again, clear it. 2,000 pallets times $1 equals $2,000, right? Divided by two is 1,000. So that means that for that deal, you, Todd, would make 1,000 bucks a week, right? Not bad. Times Not bad. 50 is 50 grand a year for one deal, right? So that that's one deal only made you, yeah, only made you 50 cents a pallet. Right. But that's 50 grand a year for one deal. For one, yeah, one deal, right. That's gonna keep coming, right? Now, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Some of these people only need pallets once a month. So let's say 2,000 pallets times one dollar equals two thousand dollars divided by two equals one thousand dollars a month right 
times 12, $12,000 a year for one deal. How many do you need to make that $120,000 a year at the same numbers? 10. Right. Mm -hmm. So then it's easy to add up. It's easy to figure out what you need in order to get paid. This is the most lucrative business only because, and it's the simplest business because you're not trading time for dollars. The same conversations that you did that paid you $12,000 a year could have paid you $120,000 a year. The same conversation that Matt had that paid him $200,000 a year is the same amount of conversation that would have only paid him $20,000 a year because it was just numbers. Mm. The time is the same. The conversations would have been the same. So if, if I sent Matt or sent Gene or sent Todd or Blue or Q and everybody else that's in this business, if I sent them a lead that was 2,000 or 1,000 pallets a month, it's going to be the same conversation. It's just a matter of how many pallets you're going to sell for how much. So if you're going to make $1,000 a month, that same conversations would have made you $1,000 a week if they needed 1,000 pallets a week and you only made a dollar. You see what I mean? It's, and the bad part about it, the crazy part about it is 87% of all business in the world is either trying to buy pallets or give away pallets or both. Hey, now, Gene, that brings up a point because, okay, so maybe the people that you see out, you know, kind of independent, you see them guys in them pickup trucks and they got them pallets stacked up to the heavens, man, and bungee corded down. Yep. And they're, and they're probably getting them from the back of grocery stores and everything else. And so they're trying to find the best pallets they can for free mm -hmm. and then go sell them. So really, that's not even our concern. That's not our competition, is it? That's not our model. Just like yeah. John said from the beginning, when you're selling pallets the way he sells pallets, right? Your only competition are scavengers. People who go get five or six pallets and go sell them to the pallet, to the pallet yards, right? They're not even trying to sell them to other businesses because they don't know how to do that. So the five or six pallets that they pick up off the street, they, buy, they, they sell them for beer money and they want their money right then and there, no problem. Now, next level. Yeah, that's gotcha. like punching third graders. Now, okay, gotcha. the next level is what John does and what most of his students do. And that is they get a truck and they load as many pallets as they can and they sell those pallets to a business who needs those pallets. Unfortunately for that model, it's not a bad model because John makes a lot of money with that model. And a number of people make a lot of money with that model. John didn't have to sell this to people. He could have just made his money. Trust me. This ain't a situation where John is making more money selling the training than he is selling the palace. No, no. He actually brought on more headache in his life, right? Dealing with people who are talking about they can't afford $2,000, right? It's simple. Or you can go to the simplest biz ever and get the full discount, right? And then you also get me to show you how this game works. But that's just a pitch. But, it, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> right. So but but the bottom line is John's model. Right. Is limited to how many pallets you can put on that truck. It's also limited to how many times you can drive back and forth getting pallets per day to get them back to somebody else per day. So the next level, which is part of John's training, which is why I'm doing this, is brokering. All right. Brokering is where you sit at home and you do the deal between the pallet yard and the business. All right. But right. even then you are limited to how many hours a day you can do that by yourself. So this is what I have done to take it to that next level. And that is I'm not only leveraging units for dollars. I'm also leveraging other people's efforts for dollars while in the same time making you tons of money but i'm also saying within six months of joining with me as a subcontractor you are required to buy john's full training 
so that you can be me. Hey, so what is the time frame on that? When do we have to do that, Greg? Six months from the time Six you start months. working with me. So okay. everybody's going to pretty much get started making calls and stuff, say, Monday. A couple of guys okay. have already been working on it. But for the most part, all the people who are working with me right now, and anybody who's watching this, if you start working with me right now, right? First thing you want to do is you want to call the number, 612-888-7807. When you make that call, I'm not going to answer it. You're going to leave a message. That message is your interview. How you approach me on the phone will let me know whether you can do this. Because this is just about being able to talk on the phone. Simple stuff that you do every day. But you're not talking to your buddies. You're talking to a business. So keep that in mind. Now, with that said, everybody working with me, if you just do what I ask you to do, and it's really super simple, you will make money. And as you make that money, it will be passive almost passive means doing nothing absolutely nothing i do that with residuals from record sales right very few people have passive income there's no such thing as a passive income coming from an mlm it doesn't exist because you have to keep working to keep those numbers up because for every one person you bring in 50 to 100 drop off at the bottom i've been there we all have okay so again what I'm saying is put yourself in a position to do something you've never done so you can make something you never made, right? If you are an MLMer, I already know there's a 98% chance you're not making any money. If you're an MLMer that's in that 2% that is making at least 10 grand a month, you're working way harder than you'll ever work doing this for that same money. And again, I just gave a scenario where Matt makes $4,000 a week. That's $200,000 a year. And after he's set that deal in play, he only needs to do one thing a week. And that's make a phone call, a friendly call, making sure they got what they needed. Now, let's say he makes that call week three and say, hey, this is Matt. How you doing, Matt? I got a problem. What's the problem, man? What's going on? Well, the guys that were late, they didn't get here to 930. You're supposed to be here at eight, right? And they didn't get here to 930. Not a big deal, but it goes against what we agreed on. Hey, you should have called me at 815. When you didn't see that truck, you should have called me at 815. From now on, do not hesitate. Call me the moment anything is not right. Then Matt goes to me and said, Greg, ABC Lumber, we're an hour and a half late. No problem. I call them. ABC Lumber, is there a problem? Do you not want this deal? There's 10 companies kicking your door down trying to get this deal from you. Why were you an hour and a half late? Oh, man, the driver, his wife had a baby. and Oh, okay, I get it. No problem. No problem. Let's just make sure we're not late again. Right? And it's done. It's done. All right? Or Matt, um, uh, no, Matt calls the guy. Uh, everything good today, John? Uh, yeah, it was cool. Couple of couple of, of those stacks of pallets, there were two or three of them that were kind of busted up. Oh, no problem. How many? Count them up. Figure out how many were, exactly how many. I'm going to send them next time, next week. We're going to send you double that. But for right now, I'm going to call them. They're going to send a guy over there within the hour and give you how many you need. I need 10. No problem. And you call them and say, hey, you call me and say, Greg, here's what happened. Here's what they need. No problem. I call the ABC um, lumber company and say, hey, you need to send 10 pallets because you, you sent 10 broken ones. You need to send him 10 now. Get your truck, put him on a bicycle. I don't know what you need to do. Get this guy 10 new pallets right now. No charge, just take him 10 new pallets. All right? That's the extent of your job. That's the extent of it. Now, let me ask you guys, do you have to be sitting at your house to do that? Or can you be on a beach? I the or. Hey, that's what's up, G. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the freaking world. And anywhere that you sell, you can sell anywhere. I've got a guy in my, on our team, Michael Eisbrenner. He lives in Colombia. Problem is, he doesn't, speak, he doesn't speak any Spanish. So imagine the money you can make if you can speak Spanish. In all the Latin American countries, that's... And, and anywhere where there's over five, 6,000 people, there's some pallets coming in and out. That's just the truth. 
right? If they, if a country or a piece of land has televisions, internet, lights, glasses, anything, some power's going in and coming out. So, I mean, that's that's just the way it is. So, the the simplicity of it is astounding. If I'd have known about this 10 years ago, I mean, no point in saying that my auntie had balls, she'd be an uncle. No point in going into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, it is what it is. But now you guys are getting hip to this game because this is the biggest game in town. The biggest. For well, that's rock and roll, son. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. So, hey, I don't want to eat up too much more of your you guys' time. Uh, nobody, Thanks, else called, nobody else is calling today. So, again, uh, if, you, uh, if you're watching this video, Right. This is only three of the 11 people who are already on my team. Right. They don't work for me. They work with me. Right. If you want to work with me, call 612-888-7807 and we can get you started. Right. But your, your phone call will be your interview. And if you don't know how to sell before you even call me, you need to go on YouTube and, and look up Jordan Belfort phone sales and watch everything he sells and watch how he does it and then when you're ready then call me and we can get you started but again there's no time like the present right but if it takes you the next six months to figure this out six months from now you're going to start making some money like our guys are going to start making money so that's all i got and um thanks guys for coming on todd matt gene thank you for coming on everybody watching this all the guys from the from our team. Thanks for watching it. Getting energized. Because every week we're gonna do this call every week. So thanks, G. No problem. Appreciate you, no man. Problem. So um I'm gonna get out of here again. Um I'm Greg. This is ABS Inc. Aggregate Business Surplus and uh abizsurplus.com as well as twin cities palette company.com. See how easy this is folks I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm excited, man. All right, right on. All right, guys. Well, listen, I'm going to get out of here. And um, you guys have a good rest of the day. Have a happy new year. Don't pay attention to them. Don't watch television. None of that stuff matters to you. The only thing that matters right now is getting your bread up. That's all that matters. Because when it's all said and done, everything else will take care of itself if you're getting paid. Period. And I'm trying to get as many people paid more than they've ever been paid in 2021. 2021 is going to be an epic year for a lot of people. So get involved. Let's get started. And again, as always in parting, peace.